My first memories of the name Wes. Yeah. Because that's what everybody knew him in. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Wes, that was their favorite <laughs> phrase. Yeah. You know, Wes said and Wes did. <laughs> that became the phrase. Mm -hmm. But when I first heard the word Wes, which I remembered later, was from a, a man named um, um, Thornell Schwartz, who played guitar with uh, Jimmy Smith. He was one of the earlier guitar players mm -hmm. that played with him. It was him and another cat. They were both my early teachers on guitar. Okay. Um, and uh, he told me about a man. He said, George, you ain't heard no guitar yet. There's a guy, and he told me from the Midway. He told me the city, but I couldn't remember because I never heard of Indianapolis before. Right, that's right. <laughs> so he said, no, this cat is the baddest cat there is, man. He said he played with his thumb, but to me that didn't mean anything because I right. never heard nobody play with his thumb except me. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I couldn't afford a pick, so I played with my thumb. Mm -hmm. But I was no match for anything like that because I was not a, 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 a picker. I didn't know anything about single note, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I, so I thought he was like uh, Andre Segovia. You know, and he was the black version, I figured, you know, because right. he told me he was a black man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, wow. So about that time, I was about 15 years old. Okay. When I was 17, I was walking by the jazz club, which was catty corner to us. I was playing at an R&B house. I was 17. And, and in the window, they would always have who's playing there next, next week. They had pictures and all kind of uh, uh, advertisements and about who that person was, so forth and so on. So uh, the name Wes jumped out at me. I said, "Who have I heard that name before?" Mm -hmm. But I saw him in the picture with his guitar strapped like a cowboy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, "Oh, he can't be no good. <laughs> yeah, his guitar was strapped up here with it." where the uh, keys are, you know, the tuning peg. Strap went all the way across his back and went over to that instead of down here on the body of the guitar like everybody else I knew. Mm -hmm. I said, ah, oh, he can't be that. He's a cowboy. <laughs> oh, my daddy, a cowboy. That's what I thought he was. <laughs> Until that night, mm -hmm. I saw cars coming out of nowhere, packed yeah. around the place mm -hmm. to see this so-called cowboy. Okay. So I went in the club, packed house, people everywhere. And he was up on the, the bandstand was about eight feet off the ground, mm -hmm. six or eight feet. And he was on the stool, cowboy strapping and all, mm -hmm. had the guitar up against his belly. Yeah. And at the beautiful amplifier, he had a Fender uh, Showman amplifier, mm -hmm. brand new. And I said, and the music I heard didn't match the, the look. <laughs> I said, man, that can't yeah. be him. Yeah. And he was playing some of the slickest stuff I ever heard. And he was playing with his brothers, mm -hmm. the master sounds. Yeah. And that's what they were. I never heard anything like that ever in my life before that. Goodness. They were all master musicians, man. Mm -hmm. And I never heard anything that even came close to that. And I had been going back and forth to that club all the while. Heard mm -hmm. some of the greatest musicians of our time, but nothing matched that sound. And I heard him playing chords, and I heard the sound, and the octaves, and he played the chords as fast as he played the octaves and single notes. I said, man. And smiling. And I had to go back over across the street and play in this R&B house. <laughs> <laughs> but his brothers came over, mm -hmm. especially Buddy. Yeah. Because the, the drinks were cheaper over at my club <laughs> where I was playing than it was where he was playing. He was playing at the Top Jazz House yeah. in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And I was right across the street in a place called Mason's Bar and Grill. Nice house, a local local mm -hmm. club, R and B out. Yeah, we're way in the back. Nice little room, it was very tiny. And they had a little mm -hmm. little bar around. And then one day, 
a buddy came over. And after I finished the set, he brought me, he said, uh, let me talk to you. He said, what's your name? And I told him my name. And he said, you ever think about playing jazz music? I said, oh, no, man. I can't play no jazz music. I, I, that's, that's too hard. I, mean, I can't play. He said, yes, you can, man. I said, what do you mean? He said, you got the chops, man. You can play jazz if you wanted to. Yeah. So it was an honor that he said that. Right. But it went out the window as fast as he said it because I said, it ain't going to never happen. After I heard Montgomery play, I said, mm -hmm. ain't going to never happen. <laughs> so I forgot all about it. Mm -hmm. Two years later, Jack McDuff hired me to join his band, and I was in San Francisco on Broadway at a yeah. place called the Jazz Workshop. Okay. And after the set, a guy walked up to me. I knew his face, but I didn't remember where from. <clears throat> he said, he said, man, uh, I've seen you somewhere before. He said, where are you from? I said, Pittsburgh. He said, you're that kid. Man, I told you you could play jazz guitar, <laughs> man. I'm telling you, I told you that, right? Yeah. He reminded me that he was the one who told me to play, that I could play jazz guitar. I wasn't good yet, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I was still fledgling, mm -hmm. scuffling for ideas, had no jobs, yeah. so forth and so on. The inspiration he gave me from two years earlier mm -hmm. was having an effect yeah. on me, and I didn't even know it. Wow. And then when he saw me play, affirming his projection of mine, he said, yeah, you, you could do this. I said, maybe, maybe I can. Right. I was really struggling at the time, mm -hmm. but that was great inspiration. 